Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Rift Force by One More Time Games. It plays two players, ages 10 and up, and takes 30 minutes to play. And in the game Rift Force, you are going to be vying for control of area utilizing cards. These cards will have 10 different factions, and each player is going to get four of them and remove the other ones. These uh, cards are going to come with different decks associated with them. You'll shuffle them up and you'll be utilizing them to gain control of different areas made up on this board here. And of course, you'll have three different actions you can choose from with these cards that you can always reference. And basically, play is going to go through until somebody is able to control all of the areas or defeat all of the characters up to a certain number of points on this point scoring track here. It's the basic idea of the game and everything that comes with the game. Let's talk about setup and then we'll go into how to play and finally we are going to go into my review. First thing that you're going to do is you're going to select the five map placement cards and set them adjacent to each player. Once you do so, you're then going to take the two scoring card tracks, place them adjacent to the area control tracks, and set it from 1 to 12. Give each player a scoring marker and set it aside next to the scoring marker of 1 on the scoring cards. The damage tokens are going to be also placed aside within everybody's reach because you'll be utilizing those when you defeat other players' elemental cards. And the first player marker is going to go to one individual depending on who that first player is. Each player is then going to go ahead and deal out all 10 of the different factions. And in turn order, choosing a faction back and forth, removing the last two. Once you've gathered four different types of elemental forces, you're going to take the corresponding deck with them. So if I take the red, uh, the um, lightning bolt, the uh, green, and the... Uh, pink different forces, I'd also take the corresponding decks along with them, and then I'm going to shuffle those decks together, and I'm going to create a deck of the four different decks, and draw seven cards from that deck. Once done, each player is going to begin by starting with the first player choosing one of the three actions in the game, going back and forth, and that's basically the setup for the game, and the rules are actually quite simple as well. So playing the game, each player should have their deck of four different elements shuffled and then seven cards dealt. They should have their elementals near the scoring track away from the area they're going to be playing cards down. And they should have these player references somewhere within reach so that they can remind themselves of the rules of their turn. Now on your turn, after selecting a player, we'll say that this is the yellow player here and the blue player over here, the yellow player will begin and choose one of these three actions. And each action is as follows. Action A. You're able to play up to three cards from your hand. When you choose from your hand, uh, you can select up to three cards. And the way you select them is either going to be by number or by color. So in this case, I could select purple or I could select pink or green. Um, and then by number would be somewhere between five, six, or seven. You will then be basically placing those cards down. When you place cards down, you can select to place them in any of the five different areas. If you would like, you can place them all down in the same area. Or if you would like, you can select to place them in separate areas. But if you select them in separate areas, you must place them adjacent to each other and you can't have more than one of each card go into each of the areas. The next thing that you can do is action B. Action B is actually activating your different characters. When you activate a character, you are basically going to be able to choose a color and you'll be able to choose a number. Um, or a number. When you select a color or a number, that will facilitate what you're going to be attacking with. Each of your characters will have a unique ability represented on them. So for instance, in this scenario here, if I were to choose to have, let's go ahead and set these up right, if I were to choose to have fives fight, I could select up to three of those fives and utilize their abilities. And each of them have a different unique ability. So I can select to have two greens and a pink fight, or I could have a green, a purple, and a, a pink fight, maybe two purples and a green. It's up to you in what combination of cards you want to fight with. If you have less than three, you can still choose a color or a number. However, you only get those abilities. And each of them will reflect what you can do. Some of them will do damage to the first unit on your opposing side, 
side, or they'll do the, to the last unit on an opposing side, or any unit on the opposing side. The opposing side is the uh, monster in the same area that is across from your side, and then the first slot is the one that is in front, the last spot is the one that is in back. Some mon monsters will also let you attack an adjacent side and then bring them over, and so on and so forth. Utilize those abilities and take the damage markers and place it on monsters that have been dealt damage based on the abilities that you choose. Uh, so for instance, I'll go ahead and select a couple of these guys down here. And uh, so you can see how damage is dealt. So in this case here, I'm going to be playing as this color. I will select fives. I could also select purple instead if I want, or green. And fives, I'm going to then select a certain number of fives. So we'll go ahead and start with this one here. This one here is purple. It does two damage to any enemy that is across from me. And I, if I do two damage and defeat a unit across, then I can go ahead and do it again. So pretty simple, two damage. If I then select this this five here, I can go ahead and place two damage on the first occupied adjacent monster. So in this case here, if I had two monsters like that, I would do two damage to either of these guys here, and then I will have to move that monster into the space uh, that is corresponding to the monster that I am attacking with. Green is the only monster, I believe, that actually moves units adjacent, other than themselves, or certain monsters that move themselves. And finally, I'll have pink here. Pink does four damage to an enemy, and if pink ever dies, the uh, enemy player will gain two points as opposed to the normal one. So that's how you activate monsters. You're activating them in attempts to do damage to your opponent's monsters, thusly reducing their life total, which is the number on the card, to zero. And when you do that, you'll gain a singular point as you're trying to achieve 12 victory points in the game. The next action that you can choose to do is you can choose to check and draw. The way check and draw works is pretty simple. If you have seven cards in your hand, you may not check and draw. If you do not, you will then check to see which spaces on the board have no monsters on them on your opponent's side of the field. So if I am playing yellow and we were to say that this space was empty, I would check these spaces here. One, two, three, four, and five. This space doesn't have an enemy unit in it, in which case I'm going to score one point because I have a unit here and I am controlling it. I do not lose points, however, if a space on my side of the field is empty when I choose to check and draw, only when my opponent chooses to do so. The next step is draw. You'll draw back up to seven cards. And obviously, if you have seven cards in your hand, you can't do this anyway. So this is a way that you can get cards back into your hand so that you can once again play them onto the field. And that's basically the idea of the game. You're going to be playing down cards, activating the abilities to defeat monsters, checking and drawing in order to get new cards in hand, and also to be able to check to see if you have area control in different areas to score bonus victory points. And then the first player to get to 12 is going to end the game. At the end of the game, players will each get one turn to make sure that the turns have been balanced out, and whoever has the most points is the winner. If you go past 12 victory points, you'll simply flip your token over, and you'll start at one, and you will continue moving across the board. And that is how you play the game Rift Force. So let's talk about Rift Force. A, this game has beautiful artwork. It's cards and tokens, but the board comes to life once you place the area out where you're going to be attempting to control, and the area in which you're going to be scoring points, which is separated by the characters that you have as a good memory token. Uh, but these things are going to be there whenever you're like, oh, what does this guy do again? For your first couple games, it's gonna really help out. In addition, you're going to have the different actions that you can also look up if you need to. So the entirety of the game is going to be laid out here for you to understand. Choose a card, then select uh, any cards or cards from your hand and place them down or you activate them and then you can look at these guys here to see what they do. Only thing you have to actually remember is colors or numbers up to three. Those are the only other things you have to remember in the game which makes this game really really nice and simple to understand. Now, apart from the artwork and how the game is set up, the game strategy is also there as well. This game has a lot of choices. How many numbers do you want to place down? Would you rather place colors? Would you rather place three fives or two purples when you'd rather play the two purple abilities, but you want more cards in the field to protect your area? Because as the areas get removed and they go to do their uh, guess or their, their, their uh, check and draws, they can gain more points in that way. So you really have to kind of debate on how is it better with like quality or quantity or 
or the type of characters you like to play with as opposed to the ones you don't like to play with. Uh, the game also gives you that ability to uh, go across the board from 12 to pluses because when the game ends you're going to get everybody equal turns which is nice as well. Uh, not to mention that the characters are always going to be constantly changing each and every game so you're not ever going to have the same four characters unless you play the game quite a bit I would imagine because there's two additional characters including the ones that your opponent have that will basically change up which type of characters you want to play. You can do a draft or a random draft of cards so you're going to have different characters uh, as well and I also really really enjoy the strategy of how you move the characters around. You have the three different actions. Playing the cards down which involves protecting yourself from the player doing the, uh, the, the uh, check and draws. You're also going to have the ability to activate units. You can choose to activate them based on number which can be stuff like purple. You can choose purple, green, and like pink or a color which you just choose like purple, purple, and purple. And then uh, they all do unique and different types of abilities. You can have them do additional damage but at a cost to uh, yourself because your opponents gain more points which makes you try and protect them across the board. Characters that drag your opponent's units into different areas, thusly increasing your ability to do a check and draw. Or uh, characters that are not as powerful, but if they hit enough units over enough time and start to destroy them, they can take their ability again and again. And other characters who just straight up move across the board and do damage in a widespread area. So they all present a unique style and challenge for your opponent to try and figure out how to defend against them when you are playing with them. Easy game to understand, beautiful artwork, simple setup, and a game that you're going to want to play re replay over and over again. As a strong, strong recommendation for Rift Force. Additionally, of course, the additional characters present a lot of replayability into the game as well. Now note, it only plays two players, so if you want something more than a two-player game, this will not be for you. But for those of you who are looking for two-player games specifically, this is a good choice. It's one of those games that I will come back to over and over again. It's going to stay into my collection. I will be bringing this out whenever I have one singular player who wants to play with with me uh, because I really really enjoyed this game. Uh, now generally speaking I'm not a huge two-player fan but it's a little bit better for me than one player. I like usually generally larger games but that being said this one does it for me. This one works well. It has the right amount of simplicity as far as the rules and how to play go and the right amount of complexity as far as where you place your units, how you activate them and how you do and choose to get more cards into your hand and gain that area of control. Love it. Great fun game. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, you can go ahead and check out a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game Rift Force. Uh, negatives for the game, like I said, I guess it requires a little bit of uh, table space, but is reduced based on how you lay out the board. Um, it's a little bit aggressive, so people who don't like playing aggressive style games where you're actually fighting against your opponent probably won't enjoy this, but that's typically for you a two-player game in general. And uh, I guess people who don't like fun uh, it because it's, it's it's a lot of fun i really enjoyed this game i think you guys will as well thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game rift force if you're interested in picking up the game like i said before there's a link down below in the description you can also go ahead and check out our website unfiltergamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more don't forget to check out patreon for a buck every month you'll help support us and allow us to do more live streams every single sunday at 6 30 p.m pst where we play games we do uh, guest designers on there and show you new games coming to kickstarter Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it very much. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys on the Rift Force next time.